Hello and welcome to Cup of Joe. This might be the second time I'm recording this because I didn't do the audio correct the first time. Uh, so it's a good thing I went with a larger mug today, apparently. <laughs> and when I said in round one, I, uh, I'm not using my usual mug. I usually, use, I usually use this one. But since I've been fiddling around with the V60, I um, have started brewing directly into the mug. Uh, and that's mostly because usually I brew into a carafe. I have the Kalita Wave carafe, which is glass. And I've been a little wary of putting this ceramic on the glass. Uh, I keep feeling like I'm going to break it. So I just started brewing into mugs. And um, the larger mug means I can brew up to, well, I can easily brew 450 grams in here, um, which is quite nice. And I'm brewing up Anchor Hits Columbia. Columbia Ever Montero. Uh, this is new to me. I just got it. Pretty tasty so far. But uh, I'm also still dialing in this, uh, the V60. Tried a number of different different things, kind of um, started off with uh, manipulating how much coffee was in there. I found that it doesn't really like 32 grams, so I go a little bit less, uh, up to 28. Uh, 24 kind of seems to be a sweet spot, at least for me. But 28 works too, and then uh, 16 to 1 is the ratio that I use. I actually tried 15, and I wasn't liking the result. Um, I have changed up the grind size since doing 16 though, so basically what I do there is I'll just brew and then try to figure out, okay, is it is it too bitter, is it too uh, concentrated, too over-extracted? If so, then I either need to adjust how much water there is or uh, the grind size, and vice versa, is it too sour, is it too thin, and the same goes. Either, either adjust the grind size or adjust the water amount. And uh, at the beginning, I could tell, when it was 15 to one, I could tell it was, um, it was oddly both over and under extracted. And I felt like it was too concentrated, but under extracted in, in ways. And so the, what I ended up doing is um, using more water, so going up to 16 to one, and then using a finer grind size so it would extract better. And that's where I'm at right now. And uh, it's working pretty well. What I want to share with you today though, really excited. This is Mokhtar Alkanshali's story. This is the Monk of Mocha. Um, I've shared a lot of his story in the past. Uh, we had him in the magazine uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, really excited to see this book. It is, the, it is his story. And uh, it's written by David Eggers. Uh, this is, and, and I understand this, this book has taken quite a while to write and it's got an extensive look into Mokhtar's life and why he's doing what he's doing. One of the things that I really love about this book, I think, and I haven't read it yet, but I know that if you read this, it'll be really hard for you to come away from reading this and not have uh, a deeper appreciation for what makes coffee so magical. Like I said, I had uh, Mokhtar in the magazine a long time ago. So um, it was uh, the latter half of 2014 that I ran across his story. I think uh, October, November 2014 on the site Wide which um, is run by a fellow who uh, interviews and uh, stories uh, with people in the, in the Muslim community. And I ran across this interview of this guy in Yemen, uh, Mokhtar, and um, it, was, it was the most amazing story and is exactly the kind of thing I, I wanted to share in the magazine, which is the giving light to uh, the way coffee actually is for the way coffee is for people who are growing it in the world. Uh, how uh, special it can be, and what it takes to bring coffee that is that special to the rest of the world. There's also a lot of history uh, as far as coffee in Yemen goes. Originally, it was the source of, of coffee in the world. It was the commerce center for coffee in the world. But it has long passed those years, um, and a lot of the magic has kind of disappeared, disappeared in the generations. I was kind of flipping through the issue right now. I'll, I'll put a little picture on the screen so you can Kind of, kind of see the cover. I called it Saving Yemeni Coffee because um, that's really what, what he was and is is doing. It was a few months after we published that when he had, you may have heard his story, his story's kind of floating around all now, of course, to the publishing of the book. It was a few months after that when, as he was trying to leave Yemen to come to Seattle for the Specialty Coffee Association's uh, big event. He was going to show off all the coffees that he had been working on with his farmers. He had improved the quality and that sort of thing. Uh, it, was, it was just before that when a war broke out in Yemen 
and uh, Saudi Arabia bombed the airports. So they couldn't leave. I mean, the, all that story is in here, so I'm not gonna really go into it in details. Uh, but he, he, he escaped um, in this, in this crazy story that that uh, kind of took off and really grabbed people's attention and now there's a lot of uh, interesting focus and attention on Yemen and Yemen's coffee and Mokhtar and his story and that's all a really wonderful thing. He's continued to uh, export coffee which is fantastic. They're under the name Port of Mocha now um, and uh, they have what many would consider and I would agree some of the most delicious coffees you can find in the world. And there are a number of good reasons for that, but that's for another video. Uh, today I just wanted to share with you because this book just came out yesterday. And what I'm actually gonna do, so that issue, I'm gonna share it with you. So you can you can check it out. The, uh, the interview really gets into um, the core of why he's doing what he's doing, um, as well as some of the struggles. I think uh, following uh, this interview and after that he, he ran into a lot more more struggles, but he still faced he faced some incredible incredible challenges along the way and this um, This interview is, is really incredible. So just below the video you'll find a link to that issue You can go ahead and download that I'll, I'll also uh, link it in the cards in the video and on the screen somewhere towards the end Also go get this book get the book read it read the story like I said, you, you, you will come away from this. It's going to be impossible for you to not appreciate uh, the magic of coffee more having read this book. And I haven't even read it yet. And I just know that because I know Mokhtar and I know the story. And um, but I'm, I am looking, very much looking forward myself to diving in and, and um, discovering some new things too. That's all I got for today. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.